women helped transform the Western frontier for better or for worse. Number one, Della Oxley. I am headed towards a watery grave, and may God have mercy on my soul, but I would prefer that fate over going to Jefferson. Della Oxley's suicide note, following her 1891 jailbreak in Jasper County, Della Oxley, with a criminal record involving prostitution, burglary, and horse theft, captivated the public with her daring escape from the Jasper County Jail in 1891. Sentenced to five years in the state penitentiary for stealing a horse on the 4th of July, the 21-year-old had never faced more than a $10 fine for her previous crimes. The unexpected verdict left her in disbelief, prompting her to defiantly tell the courtroom to kiss my foot and make suicide threats as she was escorted away. The ensuing spectacle continued as she sawed the bars of her jail cell in half the next morning and escaped, leaving behind a dramatic suicide note predicting a watery grave as her destiny. After fleeing to Baxter Springs and disguising herself as a man, Della's taste led her to shop for finer clothes. However, a revealing letter led to her capture, and she was returned to the same jail cell she had escaped from. Almost escaping again, she was eventually shipped to Jefferson City to serve her prison sentence. Released in 1895, Della divorced and remarried in 1896, dying of unknown causes in Taylorville, Illinois, at the age of 28. Number 2. May Calvin I have no hard luck story to tell. I'm not like other women either, in blaming my downfall on any man. May Calvin, as quoted in the St. Louis Republic, 1894. May Calvin's equestrian talents launched her career in the St. Louis Robinson Circus, but her love for horses led to trouble. Arrested for horse and buggy theft in Kansas in October 1892, she escaped custody. Reappearing in Joplin the following May, she hired another horse and buggy, forgetting to return either. Arrested for disturbing the peace in Columbus, Kansas, she ended up in the same Jasper County jail cell previously occupied by Della Oxley. Following Della's lead, May, along with fellow inmate Mary Metzger, escaped through sawed-apart jail bars. Recaptured, May was sentenced to two years in the Missouri State Penitentiary, but earned an early release in 1894. Her whereabouts after prison remain unknown. Number 3. Cora Hubbard. I could have held up the whole damn town. Cora Hubbard to the Joplin Daily Herald, 1897. Cora Hubbard, arrested at 20 for a bank robbery, shocked the public with her fearless demeanor. Despite her bold talk, she didn't participate in the heist her brother and two accomplices executed the plan. Disguised in men's clothing, Cora watched the horses while the others robbed the McDonald County Bank in Pineville, Missouri, in August 1897. After a successful escape, they were ambushed by deputies at Knowell, with Cora's gun knocked from her hand. While one accomplice was captured, Cora and another escaped to Parsons, Kansas. Branded as another Bell Star, Cora and John were arrested, and she was sentenced to 12 years in the state penitentiary in Jefferson City. However, she served less than seven years due to good behavior. Number four, Lucille Mulhall. Lucille Mulhall, born on October 21, 1885, in St. Louis, Missouri, and raised on the Mulhall Ranch in Oklahoma Territory, became a renowned cowgirl and Wild West performer. Known for competing with men in roping and riding events, she earned titles such as Queen of the Western Prairie, and Queen of the Saddle. Lucille began performing in her father's Mulhall Wild West show in 1899, participating in President William McKinley's inauguration ceremony in 1901. In 1903, she set a world record for steer roping in Denison, Texas, by roping a steer in 30 seconds. She starred in the Miller Brothers' 101 Ranch Wild West show, formed her own troupe in 1913, and produced her own rodeo in 1916. Inducted into the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum's Rodeo Hall of Fame in 1975 and the National Cowgirl Museum and Hall of Fame in 1977, Lucille Mulhall retired to her family's ranch around 1922 and passed away on December 21, 1940, at the age of 55. Looking back, it's evident that the Wild West wasn't solely shaped by men. Numerous female outlaws and cowgirls also have compelling stories to share.